Okay, the goal of this project is to create a simple background with snowflakes falling in the background. So let's go ahead and click on create and we'll start creating a new project in Scratch. Once it comes up, you notice we have our uh, Scratch Cat here. Uh, what we're going to need instead of Scratch Cat is we're going to need a snowflake. So let's go ahead and get rid of Scratch and come down here and choose a new sprite. I'm going to search for a snowflake. Snowflake. There we go. We've got a snowflake there. Um, so our snowflake is here. It's kind of big. So I'm going to change the size. Let's see something that fits the screen a little bit better. Let's try 20%. Uh, that's pretty good. Actually, even... Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and leave that at 20%. So I kind of like that. So uh, we're going to take this snowflake. Let's create a plan for what we want to do. Um, so what we want to do is we want to have these things falling gently from the top of the screen. We could make dozens of snowflakes. But what I want to show you here is how to use clones, so you only have to um, program that once, right? So we see the pattern here. I'm going to create a bunch of snowflakes doing the exact same thing. That's a pattern, and anytime I see a pattern, I should have bells going off in my head saying, hey, there's got to be a more efficient way of doing this. So uh, let's plan out exactly what it is that we want to do here. So first of all, uh, we need the snowflake, uh, and then we need to say something like um, when the green flag is clicked um, create a clone of the main snowflake and let's do that every let's say every half a second or something like that um, so uh, once we've done that let's uh, position the clone at some random horizontal position at the top of the screen uh, once we got it there, we probably need to um, make the snow flake, snow flake fall gently to the bottom of the screen. Now, if we don't get rid of it, we're going to have the bottom of our screen fill up with a bunch of snowflakes. So let's say if the snowflake um, touches the bottom of the screen, delete that clone. And I think that's kind of the basics of what we need to do at this point. So let's go ahead and start programming. We've got our snowflake here. I'll leave this main one uh, right here for now, but let's say when the green flag is clicked, create a clone. So let me go over to events. And I'm going to find my when green flag clicked block and pull it out. Now I need to create a clone of the main snowflake every five seconds. So this tells me a few things. I didn't use the word loop in here, but I'm doing something repeatedly. So that tells me I probably need a loop. Now I can make it run 5, 10, 15, 20 times, or in this case, I think I'll just use a forever loop. So maybe this will be the background of some card or something I'd use and it'd be snowing in the background. So I'm going to have a forever loop. It says create a clone of the main snowflake every half a second. So if I go to control, at the bottom of the control blocks, there's a create clone of myself block. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now if I just test this right now and click it, it's actually creating a clone. You can't tell because they're all right in the same spot, and it's doing that every half a second. But I can, if I can sort of tell, because I can see this getting a little bit darker as these clones are appearing behind the one that's there. So that's pretty good so far, but it, it also happens pretty fast. So let's make sure we do it every half a second. So um, within my um, events blocks, or control, I apologize, right at the very top, I've got my wait one second. So between each one, I'll make it wait a half a second. Um, now what I need to do is I need to position the clone at some random horizontal position. Now I want every clone to be in a different position. So what that means is I need to uh, choose a different random position for each clone. The way that I'm going to do that is, first of all, I'm going to go to Control, and I'm going to use a new block called When I Start as a Clone. So this will be separate for each clone. It'll start and then choose. I can have it choose a random position from there. So I'm going to go to uh, motion, and I'm going to say choose a random x position. So I'm going to say set x to and set my x and y. I'll say go to x and y. Now I want my y to be up here at the top. So I'm going to drag my snowflake and put it at the top. And you can see uh, right here, at um, beneath the stage I can see the X and the Y position so if I move this around that Y changes to 18 my X is negative 5 I move it up here 
you know, x is negative 130 and y is 153. So I'm going to move that to some wide position that I like. It looks like about 150 is good. It's about the top of the screen. So I'm going to fix my wide position at 150. But I want the x to be random each time, somewhere between this left edge and the right edge. So if I drag my sprite all the way over to the left, I can see that that's a negative 215. And if I drag it all the way to the right, I can see that it's about a 220. So I'm going to say choose somewhere between negative 215 and positive 215. The way that I can do that is if I go into operators, this is where I can find anything having to do with mathematical operations. I can pick a random number between two different numbers. So in this case, it's by default set to 1 and 10. I can change that to negative 215 and to positive 215. Now that I've done that, uh, I'm going to put that right in my x position. So when I start as a clone, I'm going to go somewhere between negative 215 and positive 215. And I'm going to let the computer randomly choose that position. The y position will always be 150, which is up at the top of the screen. So just to show that it's not this main sprite snowflake that I have here, I'm going to drag this here. And I think this is a good time to test. This is something I like to do a lot when I'm coding is I code a little bit and then I test it. I code a little and then I test. If you wait until the end of your coding to test, it may be that you have an error, which is common in coding. Um, and it might be more difficult to pinpoint where the error is because you might have a lot of code at that point. So I like to code just a little bit and test as I go along. So I'm going to test it right now and just see if I get a bunch of random snowflakes appearing at the top. So I click and Every half second, I'm getting a snowflake appearing at the top, which is exactly what I wanted. So that's pretty good. I do notice one thing, though. This snowflake in the middle kind of stays here the whole time. So um, I'm going to pause this, and I'm just going to hide that snowflake right when I begin. So if I go to Looks, there's a Hide button here, or bl Hide Block. And right when I click the green flag at the beginning, I'm going to hide that main uh, snowflake, and I don't want to be able to see that one. Of course, if I go ahead and make a clone of a hidden snowflake, all the other snowflakes are hidden. So what that means is when I start as a clone, I need to show, uh, let's show it after it moves to some X position. So now I'm going to stop it and show. And now you can see I've got them showing up in random positions at the top. That's great. So I've already done half of what my, my plan is that I decomposed here at the top. Let's look at number three. I need to make the snowflake fall gently to the bottom of the screen. Well, just like we saw before with this snowflake, if I am in the middle of the screen, at the top of the screen is 150. At the bottom, you can see I'm here in the middle. It's about uh, zero, closer to zero. It's negative 25. So that means Y is decreasing as it goes down the screen. So what I need to do is I need to make the clone fall repeatedly. Again, this is a pattern. I could change it and say, make it fall by 25, make it fall by 25, by 25. But if it's happening repeatedly, bells should be going off in my head, and that's an opportunity for saying, let's put a forever loop in here. So I'm going to forever make this fall to the bottom. So I'm going to get a forever loop, and then I'm going to uh, change my Y. I'm going to change my Y by, let's say, um, I'll change it just by negative 10. I'll see how that works. And I'm going to go ahead and just try this out now. I do have a number four here in my plan, but I'm, I want to test this now and just make sure things are good. Okay, so they're falling, but it's kind of falling more like rain. They're not falling quite as softly as I would like uh, snowflakes to fall. So let's change this Y instead of negative 10. I'll say negative 3. And you can see it updated this automatically, and now they're kind of falling softly. But I'm getting a lot of snowflakes at the bottom, so let's look at this last part of our plan. If the snowflake touches the bottom of the screen, delete the clone. So I'm going to go back over to control, and in control I have some blocks that are if blocks. Um, this is if something happens, then do that thing. So I can see right here I have an if, and then it's looking for a condition, something happening then. So I'm going to put that inside of my forever loop. I'm going to say if, and in this case I want to see if I'm touching the edge of the screen. So if that's the case, I go to sensing to sense things. And the very top block says touching. So I'm going to grab this touching and put it in there. Now the default is mouse pointer, but you can see this has a drop down. So this is what's called a parameter or an argument. And I'm going to click on this, and there are other possibilities for the options I can put in here, other arguments. And in this case, it says if touching edge, then do something. Well, if I look at my plane here, if it's touching the bottom of the screen, I want to delete my clone. So I'm going to go back to control. 
and I'm going to drag out the delete this clone block. And now I, if I get to the bottom, it will delete the clone. So I'm going to test this out and see what happens. I have snowflakes gently falling and they hit the bottom of the screen and voila, they're now disappearing. And this will just run forever. You can see the forever uh, loop is running over here and I can see the code uh, highlighted as it's running down here. And each clone is independently going to some random position, always at the top of the screen because I didn't make Y a random position. Um, I'm showing it right away and then it's forever falling. And within that falling loop, it's checking to see if it's touching the edge. If it is, then it's deleting the clone. And that is how we use clones to make good use of the patterns that we might find when we're coding.